Okay. Uh, again, I would like to move to equivalent nodal loss. So finding equivalent nodal forces for loads. So we're going to take an example here. And we only need to find that if we have forces that are applied along the length of the element. So if my forces are applied at the nodes, I don't have to find any equivalent ones. But in this case here, if I have like a bar element, and on this bar element that has a length L, I have a distributed surface load. And remember, everything has to be acting along the X axis. So even though I'm showing this triangular distribution, but the force is going in the X direction. So this is just to represent the function. So if this function is given by C times X, where C is a constant, and because it is linear, it's a distributed load, it's gonna be expressed as pounds per inch. So at X equals zero, this is zero. At X equals L, I'm gonna get CL, just to give you a feel. So here we are looking at an example of traction loads. And the goal is to find these, oops, equivalent, sorry, finding the equivalent nodal forces or nodal loads. So the nodal forces for that traction force F are gonna be F1X and F2X. And these are equal to the double integral over surface S1 multiplied by N transpose times the traction forces Tx ds. This is equal to the integral from zero to L And I'm gonna go here uh, and transpose one minus X over L. And here I have X over L multiply by the traction function C times X DX. And again, this happened because the bar element is one dimensional element. So I was able to reduce it from integration over the surface to integration over the lens L. And I'm going from zero to L and instead of doing it over the surface because it's a one dimensional element. Now this would be equal to the integral from zero to L of Cx minus Cx squared over L. And down here, I'm gonna have Cx squared, uh, I have X over L here. So I'm gonna get Cx squared over L as well. And this integration is from zero to L over the length dx. So I'm gonna integrate. So I'm gonna get Cx squared over two. Minus Cx cubed over L. And down here, I'm gonna get Cx cubed over L, uh, 3L actually, and 3L. And this is gonna be going from zero to L. So when I evaluate that, CL squared over two, and here we have CL cubed over 3L. So I get CL squared over two minus CL squared over three. So I will get CL squared over six. And here I'm gonna get CL squared over three. What does that mean? 
And this is going to be important, especially when we move to chapter four and started to do work on beam elements with distributed loading. It means that if, uh, if I sketch here my bar element, I can replace these distributed forces with equivalent nodal forces at node one and node two. So the distributed forces are going in the positive X direction. I'm gonna get here a C L squared over six at node one from here. And at node two, I am gonna get a C L squared over three. Now remember these equivalent nodal forces has have to be statically equivalent to the actual force. So if you look at the actual force, what is the magnitude of it? We get CL times L over two, right? So the total load is equal to CL squared over two, which should be equal to CL squared over six plus C L squared over three. So this is the area under the distributed load. This is F1X and this is F2X. Make sense? You all see that? Now we can use this approach to solve a problem of a bar with surface loads or with distributed loads. And for a simple bar, we can do it as a one element. So I wanna show you here this example and I'm gonna walk you through it. So I take here the bar element and I use the CL over three and CL, uh, sorry, CL, uh, 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 CL squared over six and CL squared over three. And I find these equivalent nodal forces in green. This bar is fixed at one end. So I have this reaction force as a contribution to the nodal forces. When uh, I have here the equivalent nodal forces, and I write my global stiffness equation using one element. So the F function would have the reaction and the minus 60,000, which is green. I use that to solve for the displacement and I find the displacement at the free end. So I have the free end here and I was able to find because U2 is a zero, but I was able to find U1.0018. I can use the nodal displacements to find the stress in the bar. And I find the stress in the bar to be equal to 24 mega Pascal. So I find here a solution using one element. Now, would you agree that the stress in this element should be the same throughout the element as 24 mega Pascal? Excuse me? Yeah, but because of the variable distributed loads, I think we can all see that the stress is not gonna be the same throughout the member, right? Yes, the displacement here is zero. And yes, the displacement at the end is gonna be 0.18, but the stress is not gonna be uniform. We can prove that if I take the very same problem and break it into two elements. So I'm using a little finer mesh. So I break it here into two elements, one and two. And I start separating the elements. 
and I look at how much distributed load is going over element one, how much distributed load is going over element two, and here I have a combination of a rectangular and a triangular, which the rectangular component is just gonna be equally distributed between the two ends, and the rectangular, I'm gonna use the same approach again. So here I was able to find the equivalent nodal forces for both elements. And I wrote here my F matrix, including the support reaction. But now my problem, and instead of having two nodes, is having how many nodes? Three. So I'm solving for three displacements. One of them is fully constrained, is a zero. Now remember, we found that U1 was 0.18 millimeter. When I write here the equations, and I solve for U1, I'm still getting the 0.18, but I also have a U2 of 0.1575 millimeter. Now I use these two elements to find the stresses in element one and element two. My first approach told me I have the same stress throughout. And uh, we found it to be 24 megapascal. Look, look here what I get now. In element one, I'm only seeing six megapascal. And element two, I'm seeing 42 megapascal. We are getting closer to the exact solution, but we don't yet have the exact solution. If I work the exact solution analytically, continuous system, I can find that u of x is a cubic function of x expressed as an x cubed function. And the stress is expressed as 32 x squared. If I plot these functions and compare them to my solution for one element and two elements, here I'm looking at the displacement functions. And you see my exact solution is this x cubed function, right? So I get this curve. If I am using a one element, I'm finding the displacement at the free end and a zero. So yes, I'm right on the money on the nodes, but everywhere else, I don't get the correct solution. What is gonna happen if I use two elements? I get this nice line and the nice line. Again, the start where it should be, the end where it should be. And as a matter of fact, it hits the curve at node two as well. If we continue to refine the mesh, to use like four elements and eight elements, we keep getting closer to the curve. So we are getting closer to the exact solution. On the other hand, if I look at my stress function, the exact solution is this 32 X squared. Guess what? If I'm using the one element, this is my 24. I am only correct somewhere between the two nodes, but everywhere else is approximate. If I use two elements, I make a slight improvement. I go here from six, jump to 42 and straight. If I go to four and eight elements, I keep getting closer to the curve as you can see. It's still not gonna be accurate. I know I have to end here, but I'm gonna leave you with one thing to think about, a convergence chart. If I compare the exact solution stress and the solution that I use using one, two, four, and eight elements, you can see as the number of elements increase, I get closer to the exact solution, but I'm never there with stresses, okay? We can spend a few more minutes talking about that when we come back on Thursday. But I encourage you to read these examples from your textbook. I'll be happy to post these as well with my notes. So you'll find them. Go over it. If you have any questions, we can talk about it more on Thursday. Right? I'll see you all on Thursday. Thank you.